and you're a little excited, but you're not going to really get excited till you cast the check. <laughs> then you're going to get in there. <laughs> you get Rose Royce and get a house on the then you're going to get crazy, right? The Lord said it's going to be the same way, so don't worry about their excitement now. You know what I mean? They low level stuff right now. But once they get in their hands, and once they're with me in the kingdom, we won't be able to calm them down. So don't be worried about it. Don't be mad at them. They're operating on a level, okay? But you have to understand this is coming. Yes. Just as sure as Israel is sitting over there, this is coming. Okay. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. <coughs> Now learn the lesson from the fig tree. As soon as you see its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Why is he referring to summer? Because you know that the wheat harvest is near. Okay? You know that the wheat harvest is near. So you need to get excited. You need to wake up and look at Israel. You need to look at some documentaries that how they, how were they able to win the 67 war? What happened? That's as crazy as her son being home today. This is like, that's a miracle. What is, how did Israel win the six day war? How did they even get back into the land with all these countries fighting against them and they had no army? What happened here? It's a miracle, and you've got to see for them to be there is a miracle from God. And for God to prophesy that they would be there in 1948 in the book of Genesis is double crazy. Amen. Amen. Or in the book of Deuteronomy to say that they're going to be back in the land and tell you the year? That is some crazy God stuff, right? <laughs> so me, I'm excited. I'm like, you did all this, and you were right on. It didn't happen in 1950, it happened in 1948. It didn't happen in 1969, it happened in 1967. He told you it was gonna be 19 years later in the Book of Kings. So I'm like, how did you know all this? And it happened, so now my conclusion is that you just bad dude. <laughs> you, you know some stuff. stuff. So I'm just, I'm riding with you, okay? <laughs> You told me that when Israel comes back over there, it's the last, and you said that some of us are going to be walking around and are going to be taken up alive out of here. You a bad dude. You've been doing some stuff. I believe you. Amen. So I'm excited, right? Yeah. I may can't get you excited, but I have read enough and understood enough to understand that nothing here matters. I gotta get out of here. Cause there's some real life going on. Yes. Okay? There's some real life going on. And God has already expressed to me that no matter what you do here, it's so insignificant. You won't be, the Lord, you, they won't even be able to brag about high level stuff. Like, I'm in the Hall of Fame. They'll be like, what's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, ooh, good for you. You're in heaven now. That's that little stuff, okay? So there's some real life ahead of us. Amen. And we got to understand what the scripture is saying here. Summer is near. Harvest time is near. Let's go to Psalms 117. And then I'm, we're going to be done. plans for the Gentiles too. Amen. Okay? So that means that the Gentile project is about all done. Okay? Psalms 117 stands for the year 2017. It divides the Bible. That means it divides time. I don't have to go over all this again. But 117, why would God make 117 divide the Bible? You know what I mean? There's some serious deep level stuff going on here. And then it says here, 
In Psalms 117, two verses, I'm done talking to you Gentiles. Praise ye the Lord, all you Gentiles. Extol him, all you people. For, uh, for great is his love towards you. Wow. I stop right there. I was like, Lord, great is not enough for your love toward me. Because I was a mess. Someone told me, you're a good husband and father. No, I'm not. That's the power of God. Yeah. I'm a horrible husband and irresponsible. With Jesus, I'm a good husband and a good father. Yeah. I understand weakness. Hey, you better understand. Right. You better understand. I wasn't groomed to be a good father. Right. And a, and a great husband. My whole upbringing taught me to be a foul, de deceitful person, okay? Amen. I'm not even a one woman man without Jesus. Amen. You understand? Amen. All of this is the power of God. Amen. If I get away from Jesus, get away from me. I'm telling you right now.